excipients are not healthy, but they are added to your health products, supplements, and drugs so that the industry can make more money, directly or indirectly. Yes, that's right. Excipients are added to health products, not to make you more healthy, but to make somebody else more rich. Almost all excipients are on the FDA GRASS list. GRASS means generally regarded as safe. These substances are known to be of low toxicity, but are regarded as safe as long as you are healthy and consume only small quantities. The problem arises when you take supplements because you are not healthy and you are trying to become healthy, or if you consume a lot of supplements regularly. The good news is this. There are supplements that do not contain excipients. But do you know which ones? That is why you need to watch this video. Educate yourself so that you can know exactly what you are putting into your body and understand all the risks that are involved. So how do you know if you are consuming excipients? Unfortunately, you don't always know because manufacturers don't always make this information available. It all depends on the legal requirements of the country. Some countries, such as the United States, require that supplement ingredients, including the excipients, be listed on the package label. In other countries, such as South Africa, this is not required, and manufacturers are free to add ingredients of low toxicity to supplements without disclosing that. When you buy over-the-counter products, the excipients may be listed, and if they are listed, they are listed as other ingredients. Examples of excipients are the following. Microcrystalline cellulose, hydroxypropyl cellulose, vegetarian coating, stearic acid, cross-cumulo sodium and magnesium stearic. We will look at a few examples of these and go into the detail of exactly how they are used and how healthy or not healthy they are. But those are different videos, so if you're interested, you can watch those. Excipients are chemicals. Even though they say on the label, derived from plants, they are still chemicals. They are not natural and you cannot buy them at the green grocer or pick them in nature. The only place where you can buy them is from a chemical supplier. Excipients have been used for decades by the health industry and it has spurred many heated debates. But the debates are always around the safety of the chemical that's being used. The health benefits are never questioned. This is a chemical and it is not healthy, period. Nothing to debate here. Just like any chemical, it can cause harm, especially to the digestive system. The debate is always about whether and when the excipient will cause disease and under what circumstances. Not about whether it's health. The problem with chemicals is that the human body cannot successfully process them. As a matter of fact, chemicals are always harmful to the digestive system. And that's why so many people today struggle with that digestion. It's because we drink these supplements and drugs from a young age and then later the digestive system has been damaged to a point where it can no longer function efficiently. The human body was made to perfectly digest foods, but it was never intended to digest chemicals. The chemicals kill the intestinal microbes and they disrupt the natural balance. All prescription drugs are chemical products. They are designed to cause a chemical reaction inside the body that may mask certain disease symptoms. But when the chemical reaction is over, the symptoms will return. And on top of that, the chemical residue will stay inside the body for extended periods. The digestive system cannot successfully excrete these chemicals. They accumulate and become more and more toxic over time. The effect is compounded 
when a person takes several supplements daily. Most people react slowly to excipients. When you first start taking a drug or a supplement, you think, wow, this is great, it works wonderful. But then over time, the positive effect becomes less. And this is because the toxic effect of the accumulation of the excipients become larger than the positive result of the active ingredients of the supplement. Therefore, the dose has to be continuously increased to achieve the same effect. But unfortunately, as the dosage is increased, the excipient overload is also increased. And in the long run, the excipient build up in the body becomes toxic and can cause chronic disease. There are more than a thousand excipients currently in use. I have other videos where I explain some of the most widely used excipients. Please watch those if you want to learn more. Next, you want to know how can you avoid excipients? The first answer is avoid tablets. Rather choose capsules. In general, supplements that are formed into hard tablets have more excipients than those in capsules. All supplements starts out as a powder. And to make a tablet, you need excipients to make a glue. And the glue is mixed with the powder to form a dough. This dough is then fed into a machine to press it into tablets. But now you need another excipient to make sure that the dough doesn't stick to the machine. Once the tablets come out of the machine, they get a coating which is another excipient, and the purpose of the coating is to enhance the taste of the product as well as to make sure that it doesn't flake inside a bottle. When filling capsules, binders and coatings are not needed. However, they are still used. To explain what I'm talking about, I'm going to go and look at a few examples on Take A Lot. Here we go. So to better understand the use of fillers and pharmaceutical excipients, I am going to look at a few examples. I am here on the Tegrot website and I have typed in chromium there at the top. And now we can see these are all the chromium supplements that came up. Let's look at the first one here. The first thing we see is that this supplier only give us the front view of the supplement, so we don't know what's written on the label. He doesn't reveal anything about the label at all. Now, this is uh, legal in South Africa. In other countries, you have to reveal more about the product, but in South Africa, it is totally legal not to disclose everything about the product. The next thing that we look is we see that these are 90 tablets. What do we know about tablets? Uh, we know that they contain more excipients than capsules. And this is all that we know. It doesn't say how strong uh, the product is or anything like that. It just says that these are 90 tablets. That's the only information that this particular supplier is, is, is willing to give out about the product. Let's look at the next one, this one. Now, here we can see we have a little bit more information. There they give us the front of the bottle and they also give us a picture of the back of the bottle. We may be able to get a little bit more information, but let's just see what it is. There is the front of the bottle and what do we immediately see? We see these are 90 tablets. And what do we know about tablets? Tablets must have experience. You cannot make tablets without excipients. Let's go to the next one. And here we see it says that each tablet contain 200, that is micrograms. Now, a normal tablet weigh anything between 200 milligrams to 500 milligrams. A small tablet will weigh 200 milligrams and a large tablet 500 milligrams. Let's assume that this is a very small tablet. It's going to weigh about 200 milligrams and the chromium inside it is 200 micrograms. Now, one microgram is one thousandth of a milligram. It's a very small amount of active ingredient that's in here. 200 micrograms 
in a tablet that weigh, and this is my guess, 200 milligrams. They don't give us the other ingredients that we know that they are using other ingredients because it's a tablet and it has to weigh more than 200 micrograms, but they're not giving us the names of the other ingredients that they are using. They just say consult with the LK practitioner, the blah, 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 but they are not telling us what the excipients are that they are using. And like I said, this is South Africa. It's totally legal. It's not legal in all other countries, but in South Africa, it is totally legal. You don't need to tell the consumer everything about the product that he's buying. Let's look at the next one. Let's go to the next example. We have trichromium from now. Once again, we can see that they give us the front and then they give us two more images. Let's open this one. And what do we see here? We say that this one has got 500 micrograms of chromium and they are capsules. What do we know about capsules? Uh, the size zero capsule, which is the popular size used in the pharmaceutical industry, weigh about 400 milligrams, maybe 500 milligrams, depending on your manufacturing process. Uh, but 500 micrograms is chromium. For the rest of the capsule, they added something else. Let's look at the next one and we can see here that the chromium is 500 micrograms and then they also added cinnamon bark for 250 milligrams. That's a lot better if the weight of the capsule is 400 milligrams, 250 milligrams, a cinnamon bark and then another they added the 500 micrograms which is very, very, very small, but we still need uh, some other ingredients here because this is not enough to fill up a capsule. So they did mention here at the bottom that they have cellulose and this is for the capsule. And then they have other ingredients which they used to fill up the capsule. And this is rice flour, silica and magnesium stearate. Let's look at the next one. Here we have another product and they give us the front as well as two more images. Let's see what we can see here. First of all, it says 120 capsules. Let's look at the next one. It says that the chromium is 200 micrograms. A capsule weigh about 400 milligrams and only 200 micrograms contains the chromium. They have to use filler to fill up the capsule but they are not telling us. They just mention gelatin as the other ingredient. They don't give the excipients that they're using. And like I say, this is totally legal in South Africa. And this one. Let's they still don't tell us. They still don't tell us the other ingredients. They still don't tell us the excipients that they used. Let's look at this one. This is now foods again, but they only give us the front face. They didn't give us the label or they didn't give us anything else. This one is 100 digit capsules and it contains 200 micrograms of chromium. What do we know about the capsule? A capsule must weigh about 400 milligrams, only 200 micrograms is chromium. So the rest of the capsule is filled up with excipients. But because they didn't give us a second picture, they didn't disclose the other excipients and we don't really know anything about it. At this point, I trust you understand the significance of excipients. If there is a specific supplement you're interested in having reviewed, please feel free to let me know. Your input is valuable in tailoring my content to address your preferences. I sincerely appreciate your time. Please help us to grow this channel by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. Also, share this video with your friends and family. My name is Anna.